Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end, we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I am doing this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it together. I answer every comment, so please leave a comment. The company we're going to look at is Federal Realty Investment Trust. This is a REIT that invests in shopping centers. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $6.3 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. It's a mid cap company. Mid cap means market cap between two and 10 billion. They're trading at $83 a share. Let's pull the free cash flow. This is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And that's how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows, then discount that back to today's dollars. We also need the net income for the model. That's a profit and loss on the income statement. And net income includes non-cash items like depreciation. The reason we forecast free cash flow is because it strips out the non-cash items and it's a better indicator of a company's future. Let's pull the revenue which are the sales for each year. The sales for this company is the rent and lease payments it receives from its customers in a shopping center. So they had two years of negative free cash flow. So when a company invests a lot in its business, when it buys assets, it uses a lot of cash and it could bring down the cash flow to negative. But it doesn't affect the net income because the income statement depreciates the assets over a long period of time. And their revenue looks good because it's increasing each year. Let's look at the capital structure of the company. The interest they pay in their debt is $109 million. And let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet in the liability section. Current debt, no current debt. Long-term debt of 3.3 billion. That's debt due after 12 months. They pay 3.3% interest on the debt. They're a REIT and REITs generally don't pay taxes because they distribute 90% of their income out as dividends. So their cost of debt is 3.3%. The cost of equity, we need the beta to figure that out. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a low beta, 0.86, so the stock isn't too volatile. Let's get their current assets. This is on the balance sheet, and we need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. And the current assets is $537 million. And that's made up of $127 million cash, $152 million net receivables. Let's get their current liabilities. That's $358 million. And that's $255 million of accounts payable. You can notice Yahoo doesn't list every single line item out. We'd have to look on the 10K or their other financial statements to figure it out. But we don't really need that detail. Let's get the stockholders equity. That's a value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's $2.5 billion. That's total assets minus total liabilities. And that consists of 160 million of common stock, negative 790 million of retained earnings. Lots of REITs have negative retained earnings because they pay lots out in dividends and negative 800,000 accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement, get their operating income. This is how much money the company makes on its operational business, $354 million. Let's look at a capital structure, 57% debt, cost of debt 3.3%, 43% equity, cost of equity 8.9%, WAC of 5.7%, which is a blend of cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows here in blue. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 5.8 billion. We had to discount these numbers back to today's dollar amounts using the weighted average cost of capital, that's here in green. We get a value of the company of $5.5 billion. We divide that by 76 million shares, and we get an intrinsic stock price of $73. It's trading at $83, so it's trading at a 14% premium, so it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has. They say the stock is worth 105. Simply Wall Street uses other analyst estimates and I think it takes the average of those numbers. 
Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it definitely was trading a lot higher, maybe 160, 170 a few years back, but it's dropped a lot at coronavirus. So it looks like it could be good value, although it might be struggling with getting rent payments this year and possibly next year. But I think after coronavirus goes away, it should come right back up there. Let's look at the financial ratios. A weak price to earnings, a weak price to sales, and a good price to book. PE ratio is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over share that's outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 18. So investors are paying $18 for $1 of net income. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I'll like just see below 2.5, they're at 6.7. Investors are paying about $7 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.5. So investors are paying $2.50 for $1 book value. They have a good current ratio, a good interest coverage ratio, and their ROE is a little low. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 14%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can cover their interest expense more than three times. I like to see at least two. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Agree Realty, Mace Rich, Realty Income, Tanger Outlets, and Simon Property Group. And here's the company we're looking at right here in white. And a common ratio that you look at when you value REITs is funds from operations. Funds from operations is net income plus depreciation and amortization minus the gains on sale of real estate. And the lower the better. Mace Rich has 2.2, so they're doing the best. Federal Realty is at 13.5, so it's about average it looks. And in terms of PE, price to sales, price to book, and current ratio, they are better than the average in the industry. Anything in green means they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. ROE, they're at 14%, average is 22%. They're a little better than the average in debt at 57%. And in terms of market cap, they are smaller than average. They're at 6.3 billion. The average is 8.7 billion. So REITs are great if you want a dividend payment, although I'd be concerned with a REIT that has shopping centers due to coronavirus, but it seems like this is a pretty strong company that should get through things all right. Thanks for watching the video. Leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer.